Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to track user connections and disconnections in a Blazor server application. Your app can be notified as users come and go. You can keep tabs on the number of users currently connected and even identify the users themselves as they connect and disconnect. You know, I think I could use something like this to keep tabs on the freeloading passengers. Hey, user tracking in Blazor is awesome. And it's coming right up, right now, right here on Blazor Train. So I'm starting today with a Blazor server project called user tracking. And if you know me, you know that I think pre-rendering in a Blazor server application can cause problems with the lifecycle events. So for this demo anyway, I'm going to turn that off. And you do that in underscore host dot CSHTML and change server pre-rendered to just server. Now I'm going to open up program CS and put in some global usings. And these three namespaces right here, we will be using those in the demo. All right, now let's put in our first bit of plumbing. So I'm going to add a service as a class called Circuit Handler Service. Now let's take a look here. We are overriding an abstract class called Circuit Handler. And when you do this in a service in Blazor Server, you have these virtual methods that you can override when a circuit is created, in other words, when a user connects, and when a circuit is closed, i.e. when a user disconnects. Now the user doesn't have to disconnect by pressing a button or anything. They can just close the browser. Or they could get an exception that closes the circuit. In any case, this is really the only thing on the circuit that you have access to, ID. And it's a string that has a key. It's a unique key. Just to show how dramatic this is, let's add this service as a singleton. And this is how you have to do it with the abstract class circuit handler and then the service that inherits circuit handler service because that's what we called it. Now I'm just going to put a couple of breakpoints here and let's run it. Okay, this one's coming up and boom, we have our circuit ID and it looks like this. Okay. And we run it. Hello world. Let's open a new tab, move it over here, and run like this. Now we have another circuit. So now we have two circuits, two connections, and this override on circuit opened async has occurred twice each time passing in that circuit. All right, let's close one of them. Boom, there we go. It tells you which circuit has closed. And you might be thinking, cool, that's all I need to do. Well, not so fast. How do we know who the user is from the circuit ID? You don't. There's no correlation to any user, any username. Heck, there's not even any authentication here. The circuit doesn't care about users. That's a construct of your application. The circuit is just exactly what it is. It's Think of it like a SignalR connection. A circuit is a little bit more than a SignalR connection, but it is based on that. And if you think about it, circuit is kind of a bad metaphor because opened and closed are exactly the opposite of what they are here when you're talking about electricity. An electrical circuit is closed, meaning electricity can flow through the circuit. And when it's open, that means a circuit is broken. That means electricity can't flow through it. So circuit open, closed. What it means in the context of Blazor Server is that when it's opened, you have a connection. And when it's closed, you don't have a connection. Now remember, this is a singleton. So there's one instance of this service that handles all of these opened and closed situations. And if I just make a quick change, 
All right, now I've changed it by making the circuit ID a class level variable. So the first time I run this, circuit ID should be an empty string. The second time, it'll be the first circuit connection ID. All right, circuit ID is nothing. Now let's create another tab and run another instance. All right, now circuit ID is already set. Now what happens if we change this definition from a singleton to scoped? What do you think will happen now? Here's our first circuit. Circuit ID is nothing. Now we'll add another one. Now what's circuit ID? Nothing. Why is that? It's because it's a scoped service. That means we have one of these circuit handler services, one instance for every single user. So there will only be one circuit ID, which is good, because now a user can look at this. If we expose this circuit ID, a user could look at that and know what their circuit ID is. That's a good start. The next thing we have to do is associate that circuit with a user. And we're going to do that with this class, circuit user. Here's the circuit ID. Here's a user ID. I made mine a string. You can make yours whatever you want. Maybe it's an email address. Maybe it's a GUID from a database. Maybe it's a claims principle object. However you identify the user, you can associate it with a circuit with this one class. Well, now that our circuit handler service is scoped, meaning one instance per user, we have to have some singleton that associates a circuit with a user, right? And what we're going to do is inject that service in here. And so when a circuit is closed, we can tell the service it's been closed and we'll leave it up to the user to open it and pass in the circuit ID. I know it's a little bit strange but bear with me. And I'm starting with the interface, iCircuit User Service. So here we have what's called a concurrent dictionary, meaning it's a thread safe dictionary, a concurrent dictionary with a string key that's gonna be the circuit ID, and it's gonna be a dictionary of circuit users. So remember the circuit user has the combination of the circuit ID and the user ID. We're gonna have an event, circuits change that happens whenever we have a connection or a disconnection. And then we have two methods, one that we're going to call after we've been authenticated and we have a user ID. We'll pass in the circuit ID that we get from the circuit handler service. And then when it disconnects, the service is going to call our disconnect method. I know. Let's get the implementation so you can really understand this. All right, so we have our circuit user service. We are exposing the concurrent dictionary circuits, but with a private setter, so nobody can just come and stomp all over it. We have our event handler, and we have an on circuits changed method that we can call to invoke circuits changed if it's not null. And in the constructor, we're newing up that concurrent dictionary. And now we have connect which we're going to call from, let's say, our index page. Once we have a user ID, we're going to call connect. We're going to get the circuit ID from our circuit handler, pass in the circuit ID and the user ID. This code just adds it to the collection if it's not already there. And then we're going to raise the event on circuits changed. Now disconnect will be called from the handler service. Right? Whenever a circuit disconnects, it's going to call this. We're going to remove the circuit from our circuits dictionary and then call on circuits changed again to notify the user that, yeah, something's changed. Now, this is now our singleton. This is a service that runs as a singleton associating users with circuits. Now, what we have to do is change our circuit handler service and inject that in. Well, before we can inject it, 
we have to add it as a singleton service. So let's do that in program now. I'll get rid of this. And there's our singleton I circuit user service and circuit user service is the implementation. Now let's change the handler service. Get rid of this. Now remember, this circuit handler service is going to be a scoped service. So one per user. That's why we're exposing circuit ID is a public string. We're injecting the iCircuit user service, so we have access to it, and that is the singleton. Follow me? So this is a scoped service that accesses the singleton that broadly uh, associates users and circuits. Now as soon as this runs, we're going to set our circuit ID, and when our circuit is closed, we're going to call disconnect on our user service. All right, now we'll add the scoped circuit handler service, creating a dependency on this circuit user service. So the singleton is our circuit user service associating the circuit and the user. And we're adding the circuit handler service as a scoped service requiring iCircuit user service. Good. Now we can actually use this in our app. So as I want to do, let's take over index. So I'm injecting iCircuit user service and the circuit handler. Do you remember which is the singleton? Yes, user service. Circuit handler is scoped. And you can see I'm saying there are at user service dot circuits dot count users connected. So I can look at that directly. Now I don't have any code, so let's add a code behind page. All right, so we're implementing iDisposable, and that's because on initialized, we are hooking the circuits changed event of the user service. And so then we have to unhook it, and you do that in dispose. Uh, whenever circuits changed occurs, all we're doing is saying, hey, re-render the page, state has changed. Now, here's something that you notice. I have a circuit handler service handler here, and yet I'm injecting a circuit handler. Oh, this is how you have to do it. You can't say inject circuit handler service and use it directly. Here's what happens if you try to do that. We don't like that. Here's the error cannot provide a value for Blazor Circuit Handler. There is no registered service of type Circuit Handler Service. And that's because you have to add it as a Circuit Handler, not as the derived class. OK, so we've got our handler right here. We're casting Blazor Circuit Handler, which is what we're injecting. We're casting that to a circuit handler service. Now I'm just looking at handler circuit ID and putting that in the my circuit message. So we have our circuit ID. Now I'm doing a little bit of magic here. Uh, based on the number of circuits, I'm going to set my user ID. The first one will be Carl, the second will be Kelly, and the third one will be Doofus. And then I'm going to connect to the user service. So let's give it a shot. My circuit ID equals blah, 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 blah. There are one users connected. Let's connect some more users. All right, now you can see there are two users connected. And Carl's circuit ID is different than Kelly's circuit ID. And let's do another one. Okay, now everybody knows there are three users connected, and we each know our circuit IDs. Watch what happens here and here. Crank these up a little. When I close Doofus. Back to two. And now back to one. Now if I stopped there, it would be cool enough, right? But here's the real world problem. I want to know who disconnected, when they disconnected, right? There isn't any really good way to know 
when a user closes the browser. And if that user is logged in, we want to do some cleanup stuff, right? And so this is the perfect situation to modify our user service so that we have another event on disconnected. And so instead of just raising a generic event, we want to tell the calling code which user has disconnected. So let's modify our interface. And we're going to add another event handler, a custom event handler. User removed will be the event name. Now I have to create this custom delegate right here, user removed event handler. So I'll add that. There you go, public delegate void, user removed event handler, object sender, and a custom event args class, which we can create now. So user removed event args is based on event args, but adds user ID as a property. Now my interface should be happy, and I can update the implementation. All right, now we're defining our user removed event handler right there. And we have an on user removed we can call to raise the event, pass in the user ID. We create a new user removed event args, setting the user ID, and then invoke the event handler if it's not null. Now, where do we call that? Right here. In disconnect, right before we call, on circuits changed or after, up to you, we're going to say on user removed and pass the user ID. So now let's handle that event in index razor. All right, so now I've added a user removed message. All of this is the same, except I'm wiring up this user removed handler. And when that happens, I set my user removed message to that user as disconnected, update the page, and in my dispose, I'm unhooking user removed. Now I just have to show user removed message. There you go. My user ID, my circuit message, number of users connected, and a removed message. Now let's give this thing a shot. There we go. Let's add one. Here's my second user. Here's my third user. All right, three users connected. Now Doofus is going to disconnect. And everybody knows that Doofus disconnected, and there are two users connected. When Kelly closes the browser, Kelly is disconnected, and now there's only one. And there you have it. Uh, this was quite a bit of research for me to figure out because there are various half solutions out there on the internet. And by putting them all together, figuring out how this stuff actually works, and writing up a good demo, I was able to show you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, until this week, I didn't know what to do when a user suddenly closes the browser. I guess that I Gotcha! Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!